Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea here. I am so excited that you decided to stop by my channel today because we are gonna be talking about the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. So I really am overly thrilled and over the top because I get to review my very first Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. I had wanted to purchase her sunset palette and slight little giveaway, I'm going to get it. Um, but I was always hesitant because if you know anything about her eyeshadow palettes, the 15 pan ones, you know they cost $129. And so I kept mauling over the price like, that's a lot of money. Um, but I saw a tutorial done by Seekin Alexandria, and I will link the video in the description box below where she did a demo with the gold palette, and I was sold. Like, I immediately went on Beautylish, added to cart, and ordered the eyeshadow palette. Um, so in today's video, we are going to be doing a review on the palette, we're going to be doing swatches, and then I'll do a demonstration at the end using the palette. So if you would like to see the review, the demonstration, and swatches of this palette, then definitely keep on watching. And while you're here, you know, if you like the video, go ahead and click the like button. Um, if you'd like to comment, I love to talk, so go ahead and leave me a comment. And of course, if you wouldn't mind, and if you'd like to, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any future videos. So let's get right into this video. Okay, so like I said, we are going to be reviewing the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. So here we have the palette here, and it is gold. I mean, I love it. So let's start off with the packaging. So we've got this beautiful faux um, gold kind of metallic-y packaging here. And when you open up the palette, you see the shades here. They have a sleeve that's going to have the names of the eyeshadows on here. And then when you pull the sleeve back, we see these beautiful shades of gold. Um, so we've got 15 shades here and there are gonna be a total of six mattes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six mattes and then nine shimmers. And so the description of this eyeshadow palette according to the Sephora website says, it's a palette featuring 15 brand new eyeshadow shades in the classic signature Tasha Denona formulas, including matte, metallic, sparkling, and duo chrome. The palette debuts shades of gold in an array of different textures. It also includes browns and greens to complement any of the gold hues, so you can create a broad range of eye looks from natural and golden to dramatic glam. And everything that that description says is so true. So let me just tell you my first thoughts when I first saw the palette after I decided I wanted to get it. So I looked at it and I go, okay, well, I've got a whole bunch of different gold shades here and then these pops of blue. And upon first looking at it, I really did think like, could I really get a lot of different looks from this palette? Um, and I initially thought I couldn't. I thought I probably have most of these shades already in some other type of palette. And the matte colors look pretty similar to what I already have. But upon swatching them, and then even more so after putting them on the eye, a few things stood out. So number one, with the matte shades, they do blend like a dream. Every review that I've ever heard has always says, Natasha, Denona eyeshadows that are matte blend themselves out and no one has ever lied with that. They really do blend so easily and so effortlessly. But another thing that I really enjoyed about this palette um, is that with the mattes and with the shimmer shades, they build upon each other. So if I use three different matte colors, by the time I'm done blending them all together, I can still see the three different matte colors, which I like because I know with some other shades, I'm you know adding depth to my eye and I'm using different colors. And then I feel like, I just have one look of, you know, a crease shade, and I'm like, I just use three different crease shades. Like, I still want to see the transition of the colors, and so I really appreciate that with these matte colors, they do that, along with the metallics and the shimmer, so you can build color upon color, and they don't, like, flake off of each other sometimes, um... With other palettes, I've used shimmers before, and if you were to try to combine even just two shimmers together, they kind of like stick together and then peel off your lid and, you know, like they don't really work well together, and these shadows do. The first color we have is going to be Lime Chrome, and this color is gorgeous. It's a dual color, uh, um, dual chrome color that's got a gold hue, some greenish 
to it. And it's also got a shift of like pink and peach. Um, you probably can't see it with all of my bright lighting, but it's a really gorgeous color. This matte blue color, which is called Python, and we've got that color here. Forgive my swatches. Um, it is so beautiful. So one thing that I love about this shade was it really works really well as an outer crease um, color to build depth to the eye. So one thing that I noticed about this palette that I didn't have that I wanted was a really nice chocolate warm brown color to really like smoke out the outer edge of the eye. Well, this color does that and it still keeps its blue color, but it also adds depth to the outer look. Like it's, it's amazing. I'm completely shocked by it. Um, then we go into this metallic color called Spark. It's the white color. So this is definitely a um, eyeshadow topper. As you can see, it's quite transparent, so you can really top it over any color, and it just, oh, it's so pretty. I actually have it topped over the blue metallic shade, and it's just, it is so gorgeous. I love it for that. So then we go on to the next matte shade, and we have Araya or Rhea, and this shade is about my complexion, so um, that's why you really can't see it here. But this is a great crease color. Very soft, very buttery, wonderful crease color. We move on to Cava. And this is a beautiful rose gold color. I'll try to swatch it again so you can see it. It's a beautiful rose gold color. And um, this can be worn by itself. I've, I've put it on my eyeshadow, I mean, on, on the lid by itself. I do have to build it up because it is a bit of an eyeshadow topper, but it's not as transparent as Spark, this one here. You can actually build this one up and get a nice color payoff, but it's a gorgeous rose gold kind of color. Moving on to, moving on to Aurora. So this beautiful, Blue metallic color is awesome over Python, the navy blue matte shade. Woo, so pretty. And then if you took Python, put a roll over it, and then topped it with lime chrome, honey, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Next matte shade is going to be Dijon. Great, beautiful mustard color. It's obviously a matte, and like I said, it, it may not show the best on my complexion on my arm, but it really does show up well on my eyes. Moving on to Oro. Look at that. I mean, can we just pause for the cause? Oro is what I always imagine when I think of gold. Just that standout, high shine, impactful gold color. I mean, it speaks for itself. Beautiful. And this is a... Um, a more traditional shimmer, so it doesn't have any chunks of glitter in it. It's just really smooth, very high shined gold color. Okay, moving on to Log. So this brown color is a great neutral brown. And like I had mentioned before, I did pref I, I would have preferred a more warm type of brown just because I feel like this brown it obviously works well on my complexion, but it's more neutral, almost a cool tone type of brown. And so if I'm doing a really warm look, I just want that extra rich, warm brown. But like I said, I can do log um, on my outer crease and then use Python to warm it up and it just, it does wonders. It's beautiful together. Okay, moving on to Varus. So this is a more taupey type of gold shade, and I love it for more like everyday looks. We have brass, and brass is a traditional kind of uh, brassy color, brassy gold color. So I like to think of these brass symbols on a drum set. This is what it looks like. Moving on to sandstone, this is another matte shade, and I like to use this for the crease. So there's that shape there. Very smooth and buttery. We have Alchemist here. And this is a beautiful gold. Um, this is more of like, and this to me looks like it's in the rose gold family as well. Move on to this shade here, which is called Teak. And this is a great crease shade as well. Is Orum, I think I'm pronouncing that right. 
And this is a more muted gold. Let me swatch that again. So this is a more muted gold color, not as vibrant as Aura or anything like that, but definitely buildable. And it gives a great color as well. So here we have the swatches of the entire palette here. And as you can see, the gold colors are not similar at all. So you can get a variety of looks for them, from them um, without feeling like you're just going to be doing the same thing. So now we're going to get into the demo. Um, everything that I'm wearing on my face, I will link down below in the description bar. And that's it. I hope you, you enjoy the demonstration and I will see you next time. Oh, I forgot to say something. So I actually filmed this video already. <laughs> And I had a couple complications. Number one, my eyelashes weren't working. Number two, um, oh, because my eyelashes weren't working and we had some complications with that, I had like rubbed off some of my eyeshadow, didn't realize that until after I had filmed the video. So anywho, when you're watching the demonstration, it's gonna be a different lighting in my video because it was earlier in the day, but that's okay. We're here and we're doing it. So let's get into the demonstration. So I'm starting with the shade Sand, and I'm using that as my transition color. So just blending that um, to add some definition to the eye, and I went in a couple times with that shade to build up the color. Now I'm going in with the shade Teak, and I'm going to actually take that color and blend it directly into my crease here. So I went in about two times just to build that color up to get a nice definition to the crease. Then going in with the shade Log, and I'm gonna take a flat shader brush and pack that shade onto my um, outer V area. So I wanted the shade Log to really be defined, and I figured that a flat shader brush would get the job done. So I'm gonna take that uh, Log color about halfway to my eyelid, and then of course blending that shade into the crease because I definitely didn't want the outer edges of the eye to be harsh with this color. Um, I decided at this point to do a halo eye, so I took the same shade log with the same flat shader brush, and I'm gonna pack that in the inner corner of my eye and then connect it to the outer corner, making sure that I leave a little bit of space for that pop of color that we're gonna add to the middle of the eye. I, um, of course, went in with a blending brush and blended out those edges so that they wouldn't be harsh and that the colors would all blend well together. I decided to go in with some concealer um, so that the metallic shade would just have more of a pop, even though these metallics don't need any concealer at all. Then at this moment, I said, hmm, let me go in with Python. I just wanted to play with the blue color because I really love it. So I'm adding that to the outer corner of my eye, and I'm also going to add that to the inner corner of my eye. And although the uh, blue Python didn't overtake the brown log shade, I love how you can still see both colors. So then I went in with the shade Oro, and oh my goodness, you cannot deny the color payoff. I find that these metallics work really well with your finger because you get less fallout and of course more color payoff and then I topped the shade Oro with the shade Aurora and I loved that bluish green color that we have now on my lid so finishing off the look with my lower lash line I'm going in with the shade sand and then I'm going to go in the shade teak and just blend that out together and then I go in with the shade log and just um, take that shade about halfway to my eyeball because I didn't want such a lower, I didn't want such a dark lower lash line. And then I'm taking a blending brush to make sure that those colors are all blending well together. Then I took a definer brush with the shade Python because I wanted that blue color to be on the outer V area. And I packed that very nice and tight to the lower lash line. Then I took the shade Aurora and I used that as part of my inner corner highlight and then topped it with that white shade Spark and it's such a beautiful color here. And that's the finished look. I hope that you all really enjoyed this look. Thank you so much for stopping by and taking your time to watch this video and I hope to see you next week. Bye guys!